Hey there, nation. Welcome to the show where we help you to play miniatures wargaming on a budget. It is I, Kometa Cheapskate, and we are back with an episode of Cheap Shots. This is episode 31, and this is how to cheaply and quickly paint up some Warhammer 40,000 uh, Possess for the Heretic Astartes. Now, in case you're unfamiliar with Cheap Shots, Cheap Shots is a regular video series that we do on this channel that shows you techniques, uh, terrain, miniatures, painting tutorials, whatever the case may be. We try to save you guys a lot of money in the hobby because sometimes uh, it can be a little daunting the price of entry in order to play miniatures war gaming a lot of people are turned off to it by the price but just by doing a couple of simple things you can actually save a ton of money and on this episode we're going to show you guys how to paint some possessed as you can see we got 15 possessed and this is what the end result will look like when they're all done and uh, we're painting up these possessed in the color schemes of the emperor's children which is a uh, chaos legion that's dedicated to the chaos god slanesh for warhammer 40,000. The techniques we're going to show you guys is the cheapskate method. This is a very quick and cheap method that you could use to paint up some tabletop standard worthy possessed and save you about $130, $130 in total as well when, they, when it's all said and done. So that being said, ladies and gentlemen, let's go and get this video on a roll and go and talk about some ways you can save money to quickly paint these bad boys very quickly. All right, so step number one, the first thing you do is actually is to prime your miniatures. As you can see in this one, what I decided to use was some Rust-Oleum uh, 2X Ultra Cover Flat Black Primer. I bought this for $3.99 at the local Walmart. That's in my neighborhood. I just did basically a quick once over real fast and just spray painted the entirety of the possessed that I have. I have 15 possessed. And the reason why we're doing a black undercoat is because for these guys, I'm kind of doing this kind of partial paint scheme where part of the armor will be black and some of the armor will be in per the different shades of purple for the Emperor's Children. I I think it'd be kind of like a neat little, you know, having a two-tone kind of mixed color scheme going on with these guys. I think it'd look really awesome. So because of that, I decided to spray paint all these guys a flag by primer. Uh, for two reasons. One, it's gonna save us some time on the armor panels that are gonna be black. And secondly, it's also gonna help us out with the scroll work that's on some of these armor pieces. Anyone who's ever painted anything from Chaos knows that a lot of the Chaos armor that the characters wear have this beautifully intricate scroll work on the edges of their armor. It's got these beveled edges with points and stars and spikes and all kinds of stuff. And it's really cool looking when it's all painted. However, it's also a major pain to paint at the same time. So anyone's ever painted up Chaos, where, uh, chaos uh, anything Chaos knows exactly what I'm talking about. So to help save us some time and to also help me quit picking these up, we're going to do a quick flat primer as well. And as you can see, a couple of places on these miniatures are missed. Like if you look inside the collars where the character's heads are located, you can see some white going on there. And that's because, you know, unfortunately the primer will not catch everything, which takes us to our very next step. Okay, so our very next step on this one is basically do a base coat and do some touch-up work on this one. And all you gotta basically do is just kinda do little spot checks. Look for areas that the primer had not hit the miniature. If you see any gray or any white, uh, just go ahead and give it a once over real quick with some paint. Uh, the paint I decided to use was Black by Apple Barrel Paints. as a cheap uh, 50 cent tube of paint that you can use in order to do the job. Now this one's a huge eight fluid ounce bottle that I have that cost me about $3.99. I keep that around uh, for big projects. And so that's all I did real quick. I just did kinda the once over real fast. Now, you'll notice um you'll see some of these guys especially these four guys up here in the front uh you can still see some of the white undercoat around their necks that's because i didn't catch those when i was doing the photo after i took the photo i was like wait a minute those guys have some white on them and looked back down at them and i realized there were some gaps left so i painted those over real quick now for those of you who are more astute you might be wondering well commander cheapskate what ends up happening if the black from the apple barrel doesn't match up with the black primer what if it's different you know with different shades of black my my answer to you is don't worry about it and the reason why is because the next steps could be a dry brush anyways so when you go over with the entirety of the dry brush it's just going to add to that effect anyhow so you don't really need to worry about it, it doesn't need to be exact it just needs to be close enough because no one's really going to notice it by the time you get done painting these bad boys so with that, that goes directly to step number three, which is a dry brush. And we're just doing a really heavy dry brush with Pavement by Apple Barrel Paint. It is actually a very, very, very dark gray. You've actually seen me use Pavement quite a bit on this channel for a lot of my painting tutorials. And as you can see here, now you can see what I'm talking about when I meant that Pavement is a very dark gray as opposed to being a straight black. Uh, you just do a once over real quick with heavy dry brushing. As you see there, it's already kind of brought up some of the details already on these miniatures, especially on the raised surfaces. Pavement's a nice paint to use because it's an off gray color that's almost black but just you know light enough to be a little bit of a difference on there and at the same time it also adds some uh, dimen three dimensionality to your miniatures also makes it a little bit easier to spot details in your miniature as well so that's the very first step is a uh, pavement and then we're gonna go to the next two steps which is basically some more dry brushing 
All right, the next step after that, step number four, is another dry brush once again. This time you're using pewter gray this time or do the last dry brush on this. So now we've got our black base coat, we dry brush it with pavement, now we do a very light dry brushing with pewter gray. You don't want to do too much of a dry brush, just something that's lined up just to bring out some of the raised surfaces on the armor panels. And as you see here, this dry brushing has really brought a lot of the detail, especially in the armor, as well as different parts of the uh, possessed as well. And pretty much when you're done with that, you're pretty much done with all the black armor pieces for the miniatures at this point. So because of that, it's a very quick dry brush. When you do our oil wash, it's going to mute down that pewter gray, and it's also going to kind of help blend the colors a little bit together as well for all the black armor panels. So once you're done with that step, you're ready to go on to actually paint the different armor panels now for the various members of the possessed. All right, so the next step is step number five, and this is where you start doing base coating. Now on this one, as you can see here, I've actually have five different colors of purple that I've used for the Emperor's Children uh, possess on this one. And the reason why that is the case is because when it comes to um, possessed as well as the chaos space marines um from my understanding from the lore and from the stories and stuff like that i've heard about these characters um the armor kind of fades over time is pretty much what i'm trying to go for like this kind of like aged look where maybe at one time these guys might have all been uniformly purple but as time has gone on and the time of the warp has kind of changed the color scheme of their armor a little bit and plus you know some of these guys paint up their colors a little bit differently to match up with the chaos god slanesh or the case may be that's the reason why i have these five different shades of purple off uh, of these guys if you want to have different shades of purple you could do so if you want if you want to keep them all the exactly the same it is up to you but personally though i just like a little bit of variety in this unit so because i use five different colors i use anita acrylics uh crocus is what it's called that's the one there on the left hand side right in the middle is an old bottle of serum coat delta wisteria paint right in the middle there that is lilac mist by apple barrel paints a nice kind of bright pink color uh muted purple color rather next to them on the right hand side that is americana's regular magenta color to give it kind of like a nice purplish pinkish color and on the far right hand side that is apple barrels uh bright magenta which is a brighter pink color and i did that just to kind of like you know create some color variation within the armor as well is what i've done for that now in case you're unfamiliar about how chaos space marine lore goes um the emperor's children what you start their clothes originally were purple and gold is what their colors originally were they were one of the founding legions of warhammer 40k and they dedicated themselves to the, you know, the chaos gospel and you know kind of got on the dark side but that's basically what i did just to kind of get that purplish pinkish color for the armor just add some character and some diversity to the color scheme overall don't want these guys to be too uh, monotone in their purple armor and so all you gotta do is do two thin coats of each of these paints on the respective miniatures that you want and they're ready to move on to the flesh so now we're done with the armor panels. The next thing you do now is, of course, do a light draw, uh, do uh, two thin coats, another base coat. This time for all the flesh parts. On this one, we use Skyline by Folk Art. It's kind of like a bluish gray color, and as you can see here, it contrasts very nicely with the purple and magenta and pink that we use for the armor panel for these guys as well. And I just give that for the entirety of the flesh all over these guys as well. Now, as you can notice, some of these guys also, if, like for example, that that lilac colored fighter there in the middle of the uh, on the left hand side of the front row, if you notice, some of these armor panels are left black. And the reason why I did that is because, like I said, I want to have like this mix-matched kind of color scheme where some of the armor is black and some of the armor is purple. You see this color scheme quite pop up a lot with uh, Warhammer 40,000 players when it comes to Emperor's Children. And I also want to keep the very same thing as well. But for all the flesh parts, though, just do two thin coats of, sky, of uh, Skyline to create that nice kind of purple, uh, bluish, uh, grayish color for the skin tone as well because it contrasts nicely with the uh, purple and pinks that we did for the armor as well. So uh, two thin coats and you're all done with that. All right, so for the next step, what you're going to do now is another dry brush, and this time is step number seven. This time we're dry brushing the armor panels as well as the flesh that's on these guys as well. Uh, first of all, for all the characters that have the pinkish colors, so like the magenta and the light magenta colors, I use Cameo Pink by Apple Barrel. It's a nice chalky kind of canary pink, Easter pink, that does a really good job bringing out some of the details and the highlights on some of these armor panels. So I just did a nice little light dry brush with that on those armor panels. For the miniatures that have the darker purple armor, I use Lilac Mist in order to highlight those. And for the armor that was painted in lilac mist was that nice kind of pinkish purplish color i use uh granite gray in order to highlight those as well at the same time i also use the same granite gray to do dry brushing for all of the flesh that we had done earlier in the uh, skyline by apple uh, by full card so that way as you can see there adds a lot of three-dimensionality and as well as highlighting for a lot of the miniatures as well now if you'll notice with this heavy dry brushing that we've done for all the miniatures we have this very chalky kind of pastel finish on the miniatures if you're looking at that and you're freaking out do not be afraid of 
did that. The reason why is because when we do the oil wash, it's going to blend all that out and it's going to take care of that pastel chalky look. It's going to flatten that look. It's also going to blend the colors together. And at the same time, it's going to make it all kind of merge together and flatten it down. So uh, if you see this chalkiness and you're kind of apprehensive and you're kind of worried, don't be because that's perfectly normal. That's what it's supposed to look like because we haven't washed these miniatures yet. So because of that, what you're doing with that dry brush, you're ready for another base coat. All right, so the next base coat that we're working on is for khaki, and this is for all the bone that is on these miniatures as well. These are things like their teeth, their mutations, the spikes, spines, claws, teeth, uh, bone, whatever you have, whatever you see on these miniatures that have like this bonish color, uh, that's what you need to do. Just put two thin layers of khaki paint. Uh, this is made by Apple Barrel Paint. Once again, it costs you 50 cents. It's a good product. It does an excellent job. You will need two thin coats because you are pretty much, pretty much putting this on a black primer um, uh, base coat. So because of that, you will need two thin coats in order to cover up the black on that one as well. And as you can see here, that's exactly what I did. That. I just picked out all the bone as well as the teeth and claws that wanted to be uh, khaki color. And I just did two thin layers on that as well. All right, the next thing you do, of course, is do another base coat. This time we're doing some of the details, so things like the eyes, the, uh, what you call it, the tubing that's on their armor as well. Uh, basically also the gout of flame that's coming out of the guy's hand there on the far right-hand side. Uh, any of the details that you want to do, like the slime and the, you know, all kinds of different things that are running on these miniatures. The color I like to use for this one is Kiwi by Apple Barrel. It's kind of like a bright yellowish green color. And it does a nice, well got sharp contrast with the blue-gray of the flesh as well as the uh, purple and pink of the armor. So it makes it look really cool, really stand out. As well so you can see that i did some of that for the vents of the mouths as well as for the eyes as well as the flames and to whatever mutations i could find that i wanted to pick out a kiwi just do two thin coats of that and you're ready to move on with all the metallics so all very much all the base coating is done these guys these guys are very very quick now we gotta move on the metallics so it takes it directly to step number 10 which is another base coat and this time it's for all the metallic parts that are on these miniatures as well so first of all, we're using gunmetal gray for any parts that are going to be silver. So for example, the belts they wear around their midsections, uh, the blades of their weapons, if you want to do that in this case, you can just take that on gunmetal gray. It's a nice kind of silver color. For uh, some of the vents that are on the chest and some of the emblems that are spread throughout the miniatures, I used uh, copper in order to pick those out by folk art as well. And at the last time, the only gold detail that are on these miniatures, things like the chaos stars, as well as um, the, uh, the the scroll work on the gold armor panels of the, of the, uh, the black armor panels for these guys. I picked out in pure gold by Folk Art as well. All three tubes are two ounces, and all three tubes will run you about 75 cents at your local Hobby Lobby. And that's exactly what I use these paints for to pick those parts out. Now, you really can't see the gold, uh, the black armor panels on some of these guys because it's mainly focusing on their legs as well as their midsections. But for anything that I left in the black armor panel, I've edged the scroll work in gold. So that way it's kind of like this black and gold kind of look as well. Anything that is painted next to the any of the scroll work that's next to the purple or magenta or peak armor panels I've done, I left in the black color as well. So I've done that for that. I wanted to add that little bit of a contrast. But as you can see, there like some of these mutations around their arms, like the spikes and arrows around their arms. I picked that out in gold as well. And uh, once you pick all the parts from metallic and you paint out the metallic paint, you're pretty much done with the base coating and dry brushing. The next step we need to do now is to do an oil wash. All right, so that takes us to step number 11 as well as step number 12. So in step number 11, we do a quick oil wash real quick. Now, because this is a, uh, this is a uh, quick paint method, we use a dip wash in order to get this done. Now, most people will tell you to use Army Painter to get the job done. Army Painter is a wonderful product, but the only problem is it is kind of expensive, especially when a can of mid-wax Mission Oak poly shades will do exactly the same thing and cost only a fraction of the price. So because of that, I bought a can of poly shades uh, Mission Oak color, and basically I just use it like an oil wash and just washed all over the miniature as well. And as you can see, the polished shade does a really good job just kind of blending all the colors. As you can see, that chalkiness that was on the miniatures earlier is now gone, and that's the reason why it's because all that all that dry brushing that you've done in base coating is now being blended together. The colors are now merging together with the oil wash. The oil wash is also seeping into all the recesses and crevices in the miniature, bringing a lot of the three-dimensionality as well as a lot of the details on the miniatures as well. And also, if you also notice as well, it's also kind of uh, dulled down the colors quite a bit on these miniatures as well, make it look really blended out, looks really good as well. Now, my suggestion to you is to wait 24 hours to let this stuff dry as well as cure because it is a stain mixed with polyurethane, so it will protect your miniatures as well. And you want to give it a good 24 hours to let it dry. My suggestion to you is to work on it one day and then not work on it again until the very next day. So that way it's dried and it's all secured as well. Now, for this next step where it talks about spraying it, um, if you want to like it, if you like this kind of shiny candy coated look on your miniatures, you can skip that stage, of course. But for me, though, I like to have like my, kind of like a muted matte finish on these miniatures, so I just took a can of uh, uh, Krylon matte spray and I sprayed these guys down after they dried so that way it's a little bit more of a flattened finish and then from there we just kind of move on to the base. 
All right, so that takes us to number 13, and this is where we start working on the bases. And as you can see, these miniatures look really nice now that they're all done. So the oil wash has done its magic, and it's seeped into all the recesses. It's kind of brought in all the colors and kind of flattened them at the same time, dulled the colors down as well. And they look freaking amazing as well. Now the next thing, of course, we gotta do is hit up the bases on these on these guys. And so I'm kind of going for like this kind of warpish, kind of purplish base color is what I'm kind of going with. So because of that, um, what I'm doing is two thin coats of Concord Grape by Apple Barrel Paint. I just do two thin layers, right on the top of the miniatures as well. The bases, of course, are made with just, you know, your normal texturing. I just use sand, wood glue, and water. Uh, basically what I do is just cover the bases in sand, uh, wood glue, dust them with some sand, let it dry, then wash over them with a mixture of wood glue as well as water to seal it together. And uh, that's what I use for the texturing on this one. And when I sand, I mean, I don't mean modeling sand, I mean sand that you get from the outside because buying miniatures, modeling sand is crazy sauce, especially since the entire earth is made out of it. So that's all I really did. I just used the sand real quick and then I covered the entire base with two thin layer of Concord grape, let that dry and ready to move on for the next of the basing. So the next up, of course, is for step number 14, I do another dry brush. This time I use granite gray. Once again, it's the same gray we use to dry brush the flesh of these guys. And what I decided to use that on is on the base. That way it has like this warpish alien kind of, you know, weird kind of crazy atmosphere going on with the bases on this one. I'm gonna make it look like these guys are coming directly out of the warp, out of the Eye of Terror. This is like the best way I know how to do that. It makes it look really cool as well. So because of all I do is just do a quick dry brushing with some uh, granite gray over the purple and it kind of creates this kind of warp, kind of strange mutated landscape look that looks pretty awesome on these guys as well. And then once you get done dry brushing down the granite gray, all you gotta do now is rim the bases. And in the base, the last thing I do, I just use Anita's acrylic. I use gray paint. I do two thin layers of gray around the bases. And as you can see, that is a really awesome job. It's kind of blocking the color as well. Gray is a nice, good, neutral color that goes pretty well with both purple as well as the granite gray dry brushing I've done on the top of the miniature. And so it makes it look like this have this otherworldly kind of, you know, warp look to it. At the same time, it also contrasts very well with the, with the purple and the magentas and pinks of the armor. And it just looks really fantastic when it's all said and done. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. This is the completed unit. This is exactly what it looks like when you do our quick cheapskate method in order to paint up yourself some tabletop standard worthy um, possess for Warhammer 40,000. In this case, though, I'm not really using these guys as possessed for Warhammer 40k so much as I'm using them for uh, Forsaken and my Warhammer Fantasy Battle Army. Um, if you guys ever watched our, sh our series, um, uh, Deathly Desire, which is the building of our 3,000 point Slanesh Legion of Chaos for Warhammer 8th Edition Army uh, video reports uh, that kind of shows you exactly the progress of our army, this is exactly what I'm using these guys for to make it look like a possessed uh, forsaken because look really cool as well so that's the reason why they're on square bases so if you're wondering hey commander cheapskate why these guys are on square bases when you're just for 40k uh, that's why as well so as you can see here now the miniature unit is now fully painted up and ready to go so with that being said we're going to show you exactly how much it would cost if you were to paint this up what I call the citadel method if you were to use the citadel range of paints as well as army painter as well as um, to use the same exact method we have I'm going to show you exactly what that price is going to be and what it would look like and then of course I'll show you my cheapskate method and we'll talk about exactly how much money was saved by doing it the cheapskate way. All right, so now it's time what I like to call the Citadel method. If you were to paint up these miniatures using Citadel paints as well as Army Painter, this is the list of materials you need in order to do the paint jobs that you want to do. So first of all, uh, you'll need to buy yourself a can of Chaos Black Spray, which will be $17. That's for the priming job you're going to use on these miniatures as well. As well as buying a tub of Genius Sealer Purple for the portions of the bases, as well as the color Lilac for uh, the dry brushing as well as the work for the armor panel. you also need some Abaddon Black as well to do some touch-up work on the black paint as well, as well as buying a bot tub of Fulgrim Pink in order to do some of the armor panels as well as Screamer Pink. All those of course are $4.55 per tub of that with a Chaos Black Spray running at $17. Next you'll need to buy a tub of Morgas Bone which is to use for all the khaki colors for all the boats, uh, spikes and uh, teeth and claws and things. you also need to buy a pot of Ultimon Gray for the dry brushing with the, uh, the, with the light gray that we did for our miniatures as well. Now for the yellowish green stuff you'll need to purchase a tub of Moot Green which runs you $4.55 and for all the parts that we did in Pewter Gray which the dry brushing, you'll need to buy a pot of Slanesh Gray, which is $4.55 for that as well. You also need to buy a pot of Eshin Gray, which is the uh, dry brushing that we did on our miniatures right after we did the black primer. That's going to run you $4.55 as well for that one. And at the same time, if you want to paint up the armor panel kind of like a magenta color, you'll need to buy Pink Horror as well as Demon Eye Hide for the Wisteria color that we did uh, for these miniatures as well. And uh, if you want to go the really dark purple color, you'll need to buy a pot of Zer Zerius, I believe I pronounce it, uh, purple. That runs also $4.55 there. 
Now for the metallic paints, for all the silver parts, you'll need to buy a lead belcher, which is $7.80. For all the gold, you'll need to buy a retributor armor, which is $7.80 there. And for all the parts that are in copper, you'll need to buy a screaming bell, which is $7.80 as well. And as for the bluish gray flesh that we did not possess, you'll need to buy a tub of rust gray, which runs you $4.55 for all those as well. Now, if you want to do the quick paint method like we did, you'll need to buy a can of dip wash. You'll need to buy Army Painter Strong Tone, which runs you $32 for a can of that. And if you wanted to create that matte finish like we did for ours, you'll need to buy a can of Munitarium Varnish, which is a matte finish, runs in $19.50. Now, assuming that you have to purchase all of these materials in order to paint up their unit of possess, we're grand talking about a grand total investment of $160.15 if you're to buy everything on this list to paint up the way that we showed you. So that's going to cost you $160.15, which is a hell of a lot of cash that you could use on something else if you wanted to, which basically consists of like a can of hand sanitizer or, you know, toilet paper or you know clorox wipes especially in this day and age with the uh, COVID 19 going on so now that we talked about exactly what the grand total is going to be for that let's go ahead and talk about the cheapskate method and talk about exactly how much money you would save by painting it the cheapskate way all right so here we go with my cheapskate method first of all for primer you'll need to buy a can of estonium flat black primer that's going to cost you $3.99 at your local Walmart. Now, for all these different paints that you'll need, these are all by, called by a company called Apple Barrel. They all run you $0.50 cents a, uh, a tube. You'll need to buy a tube of Concord Grape for the bases, Lilac Mist for the dry brushing of the purple armor, as well as for any armor that you want to have like a bright purplish pinkish color. You'll need to buy a black to do some touch-up work after you get done priming, Candy Pink in order to do some dry brushing on all the magenta armor panels, Light Magenta to paint up the armor panels that you want to be Light Magenta, Khaki for all the bone, claws, and teeth, Granite gray for the dry brushing of the bases as well as for the flesh of these miniatures as well as kiwi for all the yellowish greenish portions of the miniature as well as pewter gray in order to do the uh, dry brushing on the uh, black as well. You also need to buy pavement to do the dry brushing on the black base as well and all of those paints by Apple Barrel Paint are running at about 50 cents to your local Walmart so you know great value. Plus are two fluid ounce tubes as well. You're getting a lot more of this stuff than you would get from the Citadel guys and it costs you only a fraction of the cost. Next you'll need to buy some Delta Paint Serum coats uh, with stereo color as well as Americana magenta those run you 65 cents to your local Hobby Lobby those are for the uh, armor panels on which you do make it like a like, kind of like a medium purplish color as well as a magenta color you also need to buy a tube of Anita's acrylic uh, crocus paint which runs you 65 cents at your local uh, Hobby Lobby that's for all the parts that are gonna be darker purple and of course uh, for the uh, working on the dry brushing you'll need to buy a tube of Anita's acrylic gray which runs you also 65 cents as well now for all the metallic parts you'll need for the buy gunmetal gray pure gold as well as copper those ones you 75 cents at your local hobby lobby you'll need gunmetal gray for all the silver ports uh copper for all the parts you want to paint copper and you also need uh pure gold to paint for the parts that could be golden color for your miniatures as well and like i said those ones you 75 cents a tube you also need to buy a tube of folk art skyline to do the flesh of the base coating of the flesh for these miniatures as well which would another 75 cents as well now since this is a quick paint method our dip washer choice was midwax poly shade mission oak which one just six dollars and 99 cents a can and then since I wanted to have a kind of like a matte finish on my miniatures, I bought a can of Krylon matte varnish spray, runs you five dollars and ninety-nine cents on that one as well. Now, assuming that you had to purchase all these materials at the very first time, uh, all together at once in order to paint up your miniatures this way, we're talking about a grand total investment of twenty-six dollars and sixty-seven cents, is what you'll need to spend in order to paint the cheapskate method. So, taking that twenty-six dollars and sixty-five cents, uh, sixty-seven cents, and subtracting it from the one hundred sixty dollars and fifteen cents that Citadel would require you. To used in order to paint their method we're talking about a grand total savings of 133 dollars and 48 cents so as you can see there that is quite a bit of cash and a quite a difference in paint and value uh, for some some cheap paints that you can use some cheap craft paints to paint up some miniatures and still get a really good tabletop standard for your miniatures as well so that's gonna do it for this one guys as always please feel free to like comment and or subscribe you guys input is invaluable to us as always also check us out on facebook instagram as well as blogger.com for all the latest greatest hobby news related to our channel that's gonna do it for this one you guys Catch you guys in the next one and stay healthy out there. Keep your hands washed, practice social distancing, and help flatten the curve. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.